Hello pool fans, you have found yourself at the start of a nine ball tussle between these two European players, one of which you may very well know and may very well be why you click this video link, the other one a bit more of an unknown entity. Although Mr. Yuma Derner, who just broke the balls, has a German flag behind his name and that means often quality is almost guaranteed. On behalf of the Billiard Network, my name is Rico Dix, I'm your host, and I'd like to extend a warm welcome to you tuning in from wherever you are in the world. Let us know from where you're watching this. We always love to hear where you are and what kind of situation you find yourself in that you are looking at this video right now. This, the 2022 Slovenian Open Nine Ball Euro Tour, as Mr. Derner is taking on this 3-9, you'd imagine. Made three balls on the break. He wants to make sure he hits the right side of the nine, and that's about all that's required, really. For a 1-0 lead against Joshua Filler. There you go. 1-0 to Mr. Derner. Joshua Filler breaking from the same side. Let's see what he can do with the corner ball. No corner ball. Nine ball almost flew in made the nine but only the nine ball passing the breaking area which is the top half of the upper half of the table he made one ball that was one point in the three point rule but only the nine ball passed the breaking line means he only collected two points meaning control of the table passes back to mr derno who's got a long but fairly straight start on this two ball, needs to apply a bit of backspin to draw it back to at least center table here. Bit of a tester, but wouldn't you like this chance for a potential 2-0 against Filler? Nice. Alright. Pretty much an ideal line. Wants to land straight on the pink four. Since the orange five is almost a stop shot away from position on from the four. Well, Joshua should be pretty happy with this either way, no matter how you come to the table. Jump shot and inevitability. Although, for a right-handed player, kind of have to... Oh, Joshua's left-handed, of course. So, clear the object ball in front of you. Hit the three ball very well. And look at that. Hit it perfect, you could say, for a three-rail or two-rail position on the four ball. tell you how these players got to this very situation they find themselves in who they beat or who they may have lost to this is a double elimination tournament up until the last 16 from the winner side and the last 16 from the loser side who are then who are then drawn against each other for a single elimination 32 player field and that's where we find ourselves now Joshua and his usual quick, no-nonsense tempo, no-nonsense tempo, looking to square things up. So race to nine, loser will be going home, winner continues on their quest for a Slovenian Open title. Okay. Very controlled cut break there. Nice, basically played position on the one ball because he easily made the black corner ball. All right. No clusters to speak of, so two to the three. Requires a certain angle. Could leave himself straight in on the two in the right side. And then kind of leave the cue ball where the two ball is now for position on the three. 
You know, sometimes if the ball you're currently shooting gives you position on the next object ball, don't try to be all fancy, or most likely you don't want to be too fancy in trying to get a better position anywhere else besides maybe rolling it a bit closer. But he may see, that's where he's looking now. He could also stun it to the uh, lower half of the left side rail. Or do that. I thought he was going to shoot it in the side. I mean, there is a 4-9. Mm, I mean, this rolling the three ball in would give him position on the 4-9. It's not really something you want to be going for if you have five balls left on the table out in the open. So a lot of bottom left. Draw it as far as you can into the bottom right corner. Not into the pocket, of course. And spin it out two rails. That's very nicely played. Probably is pretty straight as it looks from, from where we're seeing this. So it's probably going to stop his cue ball thereabouts. Unless he can stun it anything to the right of the pink floor from where we're looking. So what I'm noticing with this uh, Yuma is that his left bridging arm is very, very much bent. Now he's a pretty tall fella, so you wouldn't expect his left bridging arm to be straight. But he has it bent very much, I think, in, in general, maybe his chin is somewhere by the joint of the cue, the midway point of the cue, whereas most players would have their chin somewhat behind the midway point. So he's pretty close to things. No good or bad about it, just, just an observation. May have made you all think now, where, where's my chin when I'm down on the shot? I mean, as long as it's somewhere above the queue, then you're doing pretty well. So this for a 2-1 lead, race to nine, pretty important on his own break. Let's see what Joshua can do. So looking to make the orange five bottom right and made the yellow ball in the side. Two ball was exactly where it was two games ago. Joshua though, with an even tougher starter He's not the kind of player who shies away from a bit of elevation to stop his cue ball, but you know, may as well roll this in, even though he'll shoot a little bit softer, see? Yeah. A bit of elevation, thump it in. Yeah, was that necessary though? I mean, rolling it, he would have brought his cue ball where it is now as well. That would have been less violent technically, so your technique is scrutinize a bit less if you're rolling balls I would say in general right wasting no time Yuma and as he's trying to plot his way through this rack let me tell you what these players did prior to this encounter Joshua Filler one of the seeded players as you can imagine in the first round beat Falk Terzic 9-5 and then Winners round two beat Milan Mava from Slovenia, nine racks to two. And in the winner qualification beat the Norwegian shooter Ogard, nine racks to two. So a pretty serene progress to the last 32 stage. Mr. Derner, however, had a bit of a, a battle in his first round and lost that match 9-8 against uh, the Italian Milioli. So nine racks to eight. Tough loss in the first round, and then you have to win like five or six matches to uh, even get to the last 32 stage. Tough ask in this, uh, in general, high quality field. So in the first loser's round, beat Polish player Rigili, nine racks to zero. Then beat the Croatian Bevanda, Borna Bevanda, nine racks to two. As he's taking on this bank, will he make it? Boom, nice. I'm impressed already by this. You, my fella. Yeah, the players in Germany. I'm just halting my results, uh, reeling off my results list of what he did in his matches to get here. The German players, so well trained, A, in the uh, clubhouses where they play. Sometimes they don't even play in pool halls, but more like 
you know, avid pool players often rent or used to rent spaces in like an industrial area where they, you know, everybody puts in a bit of money and they buy like three, four, five, six tables, good quality tables, and that's where people practice and that's where their teams play their team leagues from in Germany you have like three or four at least divisions team leagues so that's a nice way to start and climb yourself your claw your way up to the higher divisions in the team in those team divisions you play all kinds of disciplines and you just have a lot of camaraderie a lot of tense matches a lot of competition um, then you have the individual tournaments in Germany uh, which have been going on for decades about you know there's at least like 10 20 fairly big tournaments in germany some years more than others so there's a lot to play in germany and just a, you know, a culture of players that practice have a very good competition sense you know are fierce competitors and uh, and usually are equipped with a pretty good technical platform so couple that with a lot of uh, match experience and a lot of good players in Germany from whom you can learn gives you players like well none other than Joshua Filler who is of course a bit of a phenomenon but he is you know nothing more than the next likely shooter in line you know of the likes of you know Oliver Ortman, Thomas Engert, Ralph Suke, Thorsten Homan, and then I guess it was Joshua Filler, the next world beater, and maybe the player to beat in the world, you know, kind of in the last few years, along with a few others. Anyway, back to the game. So two to the three. The three only goes bottom right, kind of, from where we are. So now what? Not really a pocket available unless he wants to bank it. Safety though, also not easy. Can cut the two ball about half ball on the left side from where he's looking. And leave that on the top rail and bring his cue ball two rails behind the orange five. Maybe see cover behind the nine as well. I don't think he can get his cue ball off the two, past the right side of the nine, into this left side rail, and then he won't be able to get cover. I think he might be going for the bank and playing position for the three in the right side. Okay, that was pretty safe. As in, of course, it was a pretty safe leave, but also a pretty safe, not really a high risk execution there, which is a pretty smart play. Filler, however, back the two nicely in a safe position so it wouldn't be able to pass this six ball unless he plays this combination. I think he can see the edge. Could thump the cue ball three rails or the two ball three rails ahead. Chose to do that in a bit of a softer manner. So, a lot of safety possibilities here for Filler. Which one will he choose? Cut the two ball on the left side from where he's looking. Bring the cue ball three rails around the green six vicinity. And leave the two ball as close to where it is now. No, that's not what he did. But, didn't find cover. Let you must see both sides of the two ball so options here and remember this could be a 4-1 lead of course all players are so motivated when they play against a top gun like Joshua Filler that will also inevitably bring some nerves maybe when they get to the clinching moments or at the start of matches but this Mr. Derner doesn't seem to be too phased yet. Also, because he's already won five matches en route to this encounter, as I mentioned, in the second loser's round, beat the Croatian Bevanda 9-2. And in the third round, beat the Austrian David Arda 9-3, as Joshua kicks this two. 
Let's see. Good things can happen. Hey, that's not too bad. And in the losers round four, beat the well-known Estonian player Dennis Graben, 9-7. That was good. And then the losers qualification to get into the single elimination last 32, he beat uh, Luca Men from Germany, his fellow countryman, nine racks to eight. So that was a, a battle to get to this stage. So he's battle hardened for this tournament. And Joshua was kind of had an easy ride. Sometimes you'd like a bit of a challenge here and there or a close encounter that kind of sharpens you up. What will we see here? Two ball towards the 7-3. Yeah, again. Let him see the right side. As you can see, any long thinking times, racking times, we fast forward for my sake and yours. Isn't that great? Billiard Network, always on the lookout for the biggest enjoyable viewer experience. Kick and stick. Probably not possible here. Two ball too close to the rail. Not might not be able to get that much left spin on the cue ball to make the cue ball stick. He could. Nice shot. Left him a bit of the two ball, but cue ball's kind of gonna go careering towards the green six. Or might have to go half ball if he can hit it. Avoid hitting the six and bring the cue ball back where it is now, somewhere thereabouts. There you go. You know, you were always cutting the two ball loose. But that's a very good shot, though. Oh. Ooh, we fouled something. I can't remember what he hit. Missed that one. Yeah, Joshua would love to be there on the three. We'll have to shoot the two ball bottom right and follow his cue ball all the way through, which is pretty touch sensitive. Could also choose to shoot the three ball in the right side pocket, but then kind of have to, has to land where the orange five is now. So here we go, a lot of touch required. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Yeah, if he could stop his rock there, that would be nice, but I think he's not straight in, so needs to spin it with right spin into the rail and then turn right because of the right spin. Crazy, really, that out of these two players, that Joshua is the experienced, no longer the young gun, where he's actually still a very young gun. But compared to Yuma Derner, he's the uh, wily old veteran. Often noticeable that even in the heat of battle, Joshua can still crack a real smile and can really show enjoyment. I think often when he hasn't played matches with a bit of a light-hearted smile on his face, that's when he's actually not played that well. Of course, if you're trailing, not many reasons to smile, but... Uh... Okay, here we go. Joshua closes the gap. Made the one ball and the corner ball. Got kicked. Cue ball back down table. And again, long two ball starter. Oh, no three balls. No three points. So two balls on the break and no other balls past the breaking line. Means control passes. But this two ball, I mean, you can't refuse it. But the cue ball is coming off the bottom rail towards the nine ball, towards the pink. We really have to roll through him not to get snookered behind him. I don't think you'll be able to avoid going into those two balls no matter where you make the two ball in this pocket. So Tester here could be 4-2 ahead, might be 3-all. Ooh, decided not to take it. Was that the right decision? Mm. I'm 
not sure about that one. Don't know if this is a combination. I mean, probably not, or Joshua would be out by now almost. It might be if he cuts the two ball on the right side. Might be able to make this five ball. Of course, the cue ball would then turn loose somewhat because he's hitting the two ball so thin. So hard to keep his cue ball in the top half of the table for position on the blue two. But playing safe, how do you do that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all far from guaranteed. The only good thing is that I think you think he can able he can stop the cue ball on the two and get position in between the four nine on the three ball. And that would be the only good thing. Following through is not possible without scratching or hitting the jaws of that pocket. Is he playing safe here? Getting the cue ball behind the four nine? Oh, he wasn't playing safe, he was going for the bank. Joshua is an amazing bank pool player. And what a skill to have in moments like these that you're not just trying it, but actually thinking, well, I think I can make this ball and get positioned for free. So, what a shot. Now, needs a lot of left spin to go three rails around the six yeah I think he should be able to avoid that With a lot of left spin bit of draw okay uh -huh. bit of a tentative hit now naturally would hit the nine ball he doesn't really want to be doing that he could come off the nine ball with a bit of right spin and then I mean the six being out in the middle of the table will kind of always have a shot I think that's what he's doing or maybe drawing it all together yeah it's tough he played with bottom left avoid the nine hit this left long rail and then spin three rails anyway you'll see what I mean Yeah, so I decided to ooh, take his medicine, but this is a bit of a more medicine than he was envisioning. So this one needs to draw the cue ball back for a position on the eighth in the side. Yeah, and this is where you have to pounce, Mr. Derner. Pounce and then hopefully break and run out after to really make this an expensive mistake see that left bridge arm so far bent it's quite unusual all right so 4-2 coming up and yuma to break and they've both been you know making the corner ball making the one ball I'll be a Joshua twice with an illegal break. Four two it is. Let us know in the comments below what you'd uh, like to see featured on the Billiard Network. Potentially uh, one of your favorite players that you'd like us to uh, feature. Maybe a certain matchup that you've heard about that you we can always see if we can get that match for you. And uh, yeah, and again, feel free to uh, like and share this Billiard Network video and the Billiard Network subscription is also available just by pressing the button. It doesn't cost a thing, but you will always be notified as soon as we post another video. So this, bank the two ball, and then he's off to the races. I mean, I didn't even comment. He made four balls on the break. It's crazy with this cut break sometimes with fairly large pockets at the Euro Tour. Ooh, hit the four ball. Ay, ay, ay. 
Yuma. Yeah, it's disappointing, isn't it? With such a good break, so such close proximity to the two ball. <laughs> and Joshua made almost missed the two ball, hit it very thick. And that's why his cue ball rolled a bit slower than he was thinking it would. Well, this is about the most straightforward and quickest nine ball rack ever. Besides the nine ball on the break. Here we go. Joshua closes the gap once more. And this, with these, the world's top shooters, you know, you want to take a three, four, five game lead because if you keep letting them back in, Eventually they're gonna, you know, they're gonna draw a level and then raise the stakes or raise their level and play faultless pool. And with Joshua, sometimes in five or ten minutes, even though in the alternate break, can reel off a lot of games in one go. So here, finally made a legal break. Very thin cut on the two. So naturally the cue ball will roll just north of the black ball, straight across. But where do you want to play position? Hit the eight ball? No, not really. So this is a bit of a gamble, but this looks very good. And the last rotation gave him a shot on the three ball. Excellent feeling there. It's hard to teach somebody to tell them you should shoot this ball at 5.8 miles an hour and you're gonna get position. So it's just a feeling, you know, knowing the bounciness of the rails, and these rails are pretty bouncy, I've seen. Beautiful. Back in ideal line. And there, that missed bank to potentially go 5-2 up for Mr. Derner. And here we are, a mere 70 seconds later, and uh, we're about to have a tight ball game. Yeah, a bit of a, these uh, dynamic tables, they've got quite reactive rails. And the uh, cue ball bounces out of the rails so quickly that the spin or um, the sp spins and the newness of the cloth often doesn't even feature that much. It doesn't make it slide that much since the cue ball leaves the, the rubber of the cushion so quickly that sometimes the cue ball reacts shorter, as these pro players would say, off the rails than they imagine. And that's why sometimes strange things happen. Here we go. Let me take the lead once more. Corner ball made, one ball made, wild ball made. Perfect position on the two. As long as he has a slight right-sided angle. Can follow his cue ball to where he's pointing now. I think he can. And that might be the most difficult position he would hope to play this rack. And the three to the four then requires a bit of touch. So like a 10 degree angle would be ideal on this three ball. Stun this in, meaning his cue ball will turn directly to the right of the potting angle. Yeah, we'll have to travel a little bit with his cue ball, but no matter where he goes, he will always have a shot on the seven ball for a lot of revolutions in this future cue ball journey. Leave yourself straight in on the seven or a slight angle. I like the technique though of, of Yuma. Quite you know, nice and loose, fairly minimal, not too tense. 
or not tense at all. Yeah, he's looking good. I've been impressed. I haven't really seen a lot of safeties, or but you won't see a lot of safeties with the template rack nine ball these days. So we'll probably need to either draw his cue ball past the middle line or stun it into the rail. And that's just good enough. Yeah, it's looking good. And what a scalp this would be beating Joshua Filler at the Euro Tour. All around is pretty common knowledge that the uh, Euro Tour is the most competitive continental tour in the world. There's about six tournaments each year free to, for anybody to enter. And uh, I think they're about $200 to enter. And about 200 players take part in each tournament, depending a little bit on the uh, location, but the Central European ones, Austria and Slovenia is fairly central, often draw players from all over the continent. And again, an illegal break by Joshua. Now, Yuma has the option to give this shot back, or he can play push out. Or you can make the 2A combination, but I don't think you will. Safety here is difficult though. You know, if the, if the cue ball and an object ball and the pocket are kind of in line, so had there not been the 8 ball there would have been a shot, then the safety is often difficult. And there's also a double kiss possibility. Careful. Oh, he tried to hand at the bank himself. Hello. Wow, I like that one. Got a shot on the three. Naturally, the cue ball will roll towards the short rail or the bottom short rail, middle diamond somewhat. Unless he wants to stun it into the nine or draw it in between the nine and the pink or draw it into the pink. Nice. I thought he had more angle than that. So, a bit of and a half a tip of. Right spin, and drift this cue ball straight to the right, across the table. Yeah, the rails are very reactive. Sometimes the cue ball almost comes out faster than it rolls in there, which is not fun to play on. Looking good though, Mr. Derner. Yeah, he's breaking better than Joshua. I mean, Joshua has had like three, three illegal breaks. They're both making balls, but Joshua's just not complying with the three-point rule, which is kind of the difference in this match. I think both players have made two mistakes or so. See that cue ball bounce out of that top rail? Wow. So race to nine, remember, we're playing for. So past the midway point getting down to the nitty-gritty business end of this match can he take a 6-4 and potentially an even bigger lead might be necessary because Joshua is always a good finisher to a match so red three ball bottom right no go one ball no go four ball but only the seven ball past the breaking line so I think that's an illegal break yeah Two points only collected. One ball made, one ball past the breaking line. Is no three points, so control passes to Joshua. Kind of a let off, really. Although that was Yuma's worst break, results wise, anyway. He hit him pretty well, or pretty much the same as he has been doing. So he wants to get straight in on the red three ball. Big draw shot or stun it? Ooh, oh, that'll work. See, like this one on a brand new cloth, you might just roll this with a bit of right spin, but here you might cross the table because the rails are so. Okay, maybe not. What am I talking about? Okay, 
Okay, coming around three rails. Left spin, top left. It's just a nicer way, a fuller stroke. Even though it looks a bit more extravagant with the cue ball. So, 6-5. And we've had a, quite a few of the straight in, diagonal, full table length, two balls after the uh, opening breaks. It's about the fifth time or something. I mean, you, that is, can happen of course, as much as they're, as often as they're making the one ball in the side, but Okay, so tester of straight queuing here. I mean, he just hit that too hard, isn't it? I mean, he must have known that. Okay, so that was a half ass safety by Joshua Filler. Ooh, missed the bank. Ooh, we're going fast forward all along. <laughs> Sorry about that. And that is not you losing equilibrium. It's the uh, dangling camera. Sometimes people walk past the tri lights that the cameras are attached to. And then the cameras make it look as we're playing pool out at sea. Is Joshua going to go for the bank here? Wants to make it six all, or he's going to be seven five down. Shot it. I mean, the pot is hardly on, but the safety is even more difficult, so you may as well go for the cut, I think. Yeah. Alright, so we're looking at a six all ball game, race to nine, which gives us a mere race to three to play for all the spoils. Joshua just cleaning the cue ball, I think. So we're not fast forwarding this, huh? This is very interesting, this cue on the table. sets us up nicely and then it will be Yuma back to break he won the lag so should it go hill hill then it will be Yuma to break I think in general these players run out and imagine I mean of course it depends the further we go in the tournament but about half of the time although on the hill hill situation how often players don't hit that break as good as they normally do without any tension in their arms. So, illegal break consecutively by Mr. Derner. So after his 6-4 lead, he has made two breaking mistakes. Ooh, careful. Yeah, just didn't hit that three ball full enough, so bit of a you know we've seen like at least five or six mistakes by Joshua which is you wouldn't expect it from him but uh, happens to the best of them as you can see here 
There's an interesting safety by Joshua. Isn't it? Ooh. Did he leave him the potting angle? I think at least into the left side. That's a pretty small hole from where the two balls coming. He kind of wants to stop his cue ball for position on the pink four, but that means you have to hit it harder. Hmm. The safety. What safety? I mean, you know, cut the two ball, half ball on the right side. Send the two ball to the top half of the table, but then the cue ball is going to come around the pink four towards where it is now, but not really a ball to hide behind. So side pocket it is, I think. Does the four go in the side? No, oh, maybe it does. So my apologies for this uh, wobbly image. Not really the best production value here, but uh, this match getting to be pretty exciting. Again, such a big scalp it would be for you, my Derner. And uh, at the moment, it would be a let off for Joshua Filler, who's made enough mistakes to lose a nine ball race to nine. Ooh, nice. That'll work. So this is a chance for Joshua to take the lead. And I can't remember the last time he had a lead in this match. So it could be quite significant. And his break after. You can roll this five ball in and shoot the seven top left. Not really a need to go around the seven to shoot the seven in this bottom left corner. If the angle was natural, he would. Yeah. So a lot of right spin to widen the angle. You want to roll this in very softly, or not, and come to the other side, and that'll work. So about to be seven six, and Joshua breaking. Could this be eight six after having lay after having trailed? Four games to six. Mm -hmm. and that's what champions tend to do, isn't it? When the going gets tough, they play tough pool. Whether it's included with mistakes as well, but still, you know, get the job done somehow or other. So Joshua Filler with this testing two ball. Poof, position on the two. Far from guaranteed, therefore the safety. It's pretty Good, but I think the cue ball can go in between the 7 9 with a lot of left spin or at least a bit. Hit the two ball, try to send the two ball to the top half of the table, maybe get the snooker behind the brown 7 or the yellow 9. Bit of elevation means a bit of a swerve going to occur. Ooh. Oh. It's a good shot though, good speed, good thickness of the two ball he hit, so there are a lot of, you know, a lot of chances for success there. Very good, because that 5-8 now also turned into a wall, so he wasn't just relying on the 7 or 9 to hide behind. What an important game, 7 all or 8-6. I think he was actually trying to bank this. Oh, that will do just fine. Ooh, I think he left him the two ball in this corner pocket closest to us. Cue ball will probably hit the pink four, which is next in line. Half ball. I'd like to think you'll get a shot on the four ball either in the side or in the same bottom left corner pocket. Make sure the two ball first. Yeah, beautiful. All 
Alright, so first chance for a run out in about 15 minutes, I think, for Yuma. So, he needs to get back to potting and positional ways. Pretty good, but kind of a negative angle, like maybe 10 degrees. This cue ball is going to drift to the right, unless he can hold it. I think he'll hold it. Yeah. In general, you'd like to be a tiny bit closer to your work, but if you have the exact angle, which he has now, you know, that's workable as well. Nine ball from its usual spotted position it doesn't really move after the breaks with these template. So nine out of ten nine balls will be shot from around this area. There we go. Seven all. Yes, it is. Race to two will determine who continues to try to be the Slovenian Open nine ball champion. Let's see if we can amend this break. Oh, one, two, two balls made. And the five ball rolled past the breaking line, but ooh, I thought the five was going to snooker him on the two. This is your chance, Yuma. Five nine combinations there. Of course, needs position on the three first. And that'll work. This is maybe a bit too straight. Meaning he might have to stop his cue ball, but then he's got the wrong angle on the orange five. Mm. I might roll this five ball in and either shoot it in the right side or in the top right corner pocket. Long bridge hand. Oh, nice. He's got to have a nice little angle. Bit of a drag bottom left spin here. Try to keep as little angle on the seven as you can. Because now, as a choice, you either want to leave it where the seven ball is now or stun it over to the left side of the table. But that means you have to pot the seven ball harder. It means the seven ball is going to be encountering a tiny bit unfriendlier jaws unless you're super accurate. So careful here, elevated long bridge. Well, uh, doesn't phase Yuma, does it? Chance to go 8-7 up and being only one rack away from a very important victory. He's got a bit of the wrong angle. If he wants to shoot the nine bottom left here, he needs to load his cue ball up with at least one or two o'clock tip position. And that's what he'll do. Stand still. Aim, focus. This guy's good. I like it. Is this man a new star in the making? Joshua concedes the nine ball. You don't see that often. Oh, that was a legal break. And that was a safety on the two. Now what? Ooh, is he cutting this two ball thin on the right side? Phew. Yeah. Yuma, that was tough action. I mean, snooker players can do that. They're good at those shots from 12 feet away, but tough action. Hmm. Ball in hand for Joshua Filler. To tie us up for a final rack decider. Love the final rack deciders. Who doesn't? But we're not there yet. Although with Joshua and this kind of table, I mean, how often in this... You know, trying to tie the match up for a final rack. How often out of a hundred times would he consolidate this opportunity? 95 times? Yeah. Mm. 
can, hand, can handle various angles on the orange five. Straight in is also good. Thumping it, stunning it. That's where he is where he wanted it, but he will definitely accept. As you can see even Joshua right pre-shot routine there, just lining himself up nicely. Meaning when you step in, you're all you're either gonna be in the right, exact right spot, or maybe you have to adjust 10% or something with the aiming. Here we go! Final rack, you want to break. Broke well the last time, had two illegal ones before that. This one, who made the one ball but no corner ball. Who made two balls but no ball past the breaking line. Ooh. Yeah, it has to be a slightly more tentative hit, you know, a bit more tension in the arm, swinging less freely. That's what I noticed there. So Joshua could always give this back. <laughs> He really doesn't want to, but position from the two to the four is tough. I mean, naturally, it seems like the cue ball will scratch top left if he makes it to top right. Um, loading it up with a lot of backspin, the best you can do is draw it back to the right side pocket, unless you do one of those uh, Corey Duel extreme draw shots. Remember that one? Anybody saw that? Look that up, the Cory Duel Extreme Draw. Should probably be here somewhere on YouTube. Remember, Joshua can still push out. Joshua can give it back, and then Yuma could push out. But you don't want to give this back. Even if you push out, you want to push out yourself and you know apply your own intelligence rather than waiting for what the other guy is going to give you. Uh safety yeah cut the two ball thin on the left bring the cue ball back behind the nine behind the six yeah far from guaranteed a snooker here Ooh. left him left him a very difficult straight in jacked up shot you know, even if you stop your cue ball there he might stop his cue ball there, take the thin cut on the four. That's what I'm envisioning, because you don't want to draw back this. It would increase the already difficult shot twofold, but I think he's playing safe. He might not have the straight in potting angle. Tough not to give the two ball away. Yeah. Ooh, a bit of a lame giveaway this. Now, but this. We'll probably have to shoot it cushion first. And it wants to clean the cue ball again. Hmm. So it's just having a look. Because drawing the cue ball straight back, then you still have to avoid getting snookered behind the orange five, behind the nine ball. You really have to draw it back past the left side pocket. Similarly, if you shoot the cue ball into the left side rail first, then the seven ball is a big ball to avoid off of the third rail. Let's see. Played with positive vibes and then good things can happen. Oh, he was able to do it like that. Whew. Yeah, that's a potential position, yeah there so no knows this is a bit more difficult shot but knew he was going to get the shot on the four just by rolling the two ball in so no heroics on the two and just accepting a bit more of a challenge on the four ball with position as well back in ideal line 
is this the last was this the last turn of Yuma Derner at the Slovenian Open 2022 you would imagine so a bit of a steep angle on this six ball we'll probably drift this cue ball all the way back up to the short rail and bounce out a little bit for position on the seven inside tiny bit soft but should be all right yeah going forward making the seven in the side cue ball might run into the nine Ooh. but if you have to stun the cue ball in between the nine and this left side pocket onto the bottom rail here or the left corner pocket it's also a very touchy-feely stroke but this is Joshua filler boom yeah beautiful this roll this with a lot of left well look at that long bridge hand ill-advised for most players and here we go oh, that cue ball bounced so hard he rolled it so softly not an enviable position to be in for a final rack deciding nine ball so even Joshua filler just taking his time not rushing into things just probably reminding himself this shot focus for the win don't go through the motions but be present and focused all right we thank you for watching Joshua filler takes it nine racks to eight have a look through our library for many other exciting matches as we see a disappointed Yuma. We will see you the next time.